This is a double blind install in a four acre woods. I like to install two blinds when I can. I can take a friend hunting or I can take a family member hunting. We show the terrain of this little wood lot in another part of the DVD in wintertime. It's actually rolling quite a bit. Uh, the following spring after installing, I came back and added some brush around the blind, kind of help hide me. And in that October, I had an encounter with a buck on a morning hunt. So I like to get into my blinds uh, right after first light, just after the Tweety birds are up making some noise and the squirrels start coming down the trees and maybe even the chipmunk starts rattling around in the leaves. With that little bit of background cover will help a bunch in not allowing a deer to pick out exactly what you are and where you are. So I got into the blind about 6.30 in the morning and this buck came past here about an hour and a half later. He uh, was probably bedded within about 50 or 60 yards of me here when I got into the blind. That's where they tend to bed in this woodlot. And at this time of day, he probably got up and just got tired of laying down and got up to do what bucks do when they take a break from sleeping. A nice, pretty two and a half year old buck. He's within 20 yards here. And just real briefly, if you are going to hunt from the ground, it's important to know that you should take the first good shot that a deer gives you. Um, because it doesn't always go perfectly, especially when you're first starting out hunting from the ground. There are quite a few things that can go wrong. So if you stood up in the blind here when his head goes behind a tree, you can, this is within 20 yards, uh, not a hard shot at all. And if you wanted that deer, you could have had him there. But he's going to put on a little bit of a show for us here. And I'm pretty happy to have him come real close to the blind. It's a lot of fun to watch. But it's a very typical pattern that a buck in a small woodlot is going to have. He's going to have a bedding area. If you determine where that bedding area is and use the wind so that your scent doesn't get into that bedding area on your way in, and you time your approach into your stand at the right time of day, you can get into those small woodlots. The worst thing to have happen is to bump him out, especially if you do it repeatedly. If you're hunting two or three days in a row or one week after another, um, it doesn't take very long to deer just stop using small woodlots altogether if they feel pressure. So real briefly about the camo pattern that you're going to want to use, a ghillie suit would be ideal. I don't use a ghillie suit. I just rely on a big blocky camo pattern, and that seems to be enough uh, for me to get by. I wear glasses, and if the deer pick up on me, that's usually what they're seeing is a reflection off my glasses. So I try to make sure to pull my hat down as close as I can over my forehead, and I paint my face as much as I can in dark color. And deer key in on light colors from the time they're fawn. They're following mom around on that, obviously the whiteness of her tail and the back of her ears. So this buck is going to come over toward my entry trail. I like to have a wide entry trail, two and a half, three feet wide, so I don't touch anything on the way into my stand location. And you're going to see a car go by on a road here. See, it didn't bother that deer at all. He's very comfortable with traffic. And he's going to come right up my entry trail. And walk right by me here within a few feet. So the people who tell you you can't kill deer from the ground or you have to be in a tree stand because it's a better technique, well, I'll let you make your own conclusion here. You're going to see him jump a little bit as he goes by, and that's because I have a release on my right hand, and I'm turning the camera, and it actually is hanging down, and it bumps against the leg of the tripod and just makes a little metallic click. So learn when to draw your bow. If you're going to have a close shot, this would be a good time to get that bow back. Any time in here, as long as you're not moving a, a great amount, you can get your bow back. And he's within 15 feet here. Could have had a good poke at him there. And tell me when you think you can have another poke at him here. Should be pretty obvious. So, pretty buck. He does go downwind of me because once they see something unusual, they're going to want to get downwind and try to check it out. But he can't get completely downwind of me because there's an open field there. He doesn't want to go in the open field during daylight so he ends up heading right back to his bedding area where he started and uh, we both had a wonderful day